All right, this is assignment one. It's about finances. There are seven key indicators of financial performance of which you need to be aware. So PCM, PGM, a lot of financial stuff on the exam. Uh, what are seven of these key indicators? Um, and then mostly in this video, I'm going to talk about utilization rate because utilization rate is one of the most important ones. So what's a good utilization rate? What's too low? Is there too high? Uh, can you figure out your own personal utilization rate? And then what's the utilization rate of the employee shown at the right? So I'm going to go over this example, and I'm also going to go over an example from the uh, Walking the ARE 5.0 practice exam, and I'm going to talk about the example that's shown in the NCARB ARE 5.0 handbook. So let's get started. So the seven key indicators I was looking at here um, are utilization rate, overhead rate, break-even rate, net multiplier, profit to earnings ratio, net revenue for employee or net revenue per employee and aged accounts receivable. These are all defined in the Architects Handbook of Professional Practice. Um, there's also some good articles online. This Entre Architect article, I'll put the link down in the description, um, covers all those terms. In this assignment, we're really gonna talk about utilization ratio. All right, so what is utilization rate from the Architects Handbook of Professional Practice? Utilization is the ratio of direct hours charged to projects to the total hours reported so uh, in my own words, it's basically time you spent working on projects divided by the total time in the year. And the total time in the year includes stuff like marketing, um, admin time, professional development, training, all kinds of things that are not projects. So if you're working on a project, that counts as direct labor. If you're not working on a project, that does not go towards your utilization ratio. It's important to note that time on a project doesn't necessarily mean billable time. So um, in this example, that we'll get to, we've got some hours that are worked above an hourly not to exceed. Those still count towards your utilization ratio, even though you're not getting paid for them. If it's a build to a project, whether you get paid for it or not, that will increase your utilization ratio. What's a good utilization rate? What's too low? Is there a too high? Good is 60 to 65%. I think this is what architectural firms strive for. Although actual project architects and production staff should be higher. Um, so maybe 70 to 75%. Too low, probably less than 60, definitely below 50, something that's not going to help the firm's average. Uh, and is there a too high? I don't know if there's necessarily a too high, but you can't ever get to 100% because you do have to have that admin time and training and professional development and those other things. You're not going to be able to work on projects 100% of your time all during the year. Uh, so can you figure out your own personal utilization rate? That's just a thought experiment. I'm not going to go over that. And then what's the utilization rate for the employee shown to the right? So here we get employee A with a bunch of different tasks. They've got schematic design, design development. They've got just some unnamed project B. They've got training. They spend a lot of time reading hyperfine blog, which I suggest. Um, general admin time and then marketing and website work. And so utilization rate is time spent on projects versus all the total time. And so to solve this one, basically, we're gonna find the things that are projects versus the things that are not project. So schematic design, yes, that's a project. Design development, yes, that's a project. Project B is a project. And down here, we have a note that says, project B is hourly, uh, not to exceed 15 hours, but they work 17 hours. And all 17 of those hours go to your utilization rate, even though you're not earning money on hours 16 and 17, right? Because you can only bill your client 15 of those hours. You worked on a project for 17 hours, it counts towards your utilization rate. Staff training is two hours. Training does not count. Reading hyperfine blog, unfortunately, does not count for your utilization rate. General admin does not count. And marketing and website work does not count. So if we check the math out on this, these are the hours, the total hours. That adds up to 80. Here are the hours for the three things that I selected as projects. These are crossed out. So your total hours was 80. The billable time or the project time was 52. 52 divided by 80 is 65%. So you get 65% utilization rate. The actual time you're earning money for your firm is slightly less because of this project B here. But that's the general principle of how you figure out utilization rate. So let's take another look at utilization rate with another example problem. This is from Walking the ARE 5.0 PCM Practice Exam by Eric Walker. I'll put the link in the description. It's also available on my webpage. The project architect for a firm had a direct salary expense of $52,476 and 1,331 chargeable hours. What is the project architect's utilization rate? 
And this is giving you a little bit of information you don't need, and it's not providing you some information that you actually do need to solve the problem. So it's a little trick question, kind of like I think you might see on the on the exam. So you're given a direct salary expense, and you might try to figure out what's their hourly rate and how much are they getting paid per year and how much of this is, you know, counting towards projects. But all you really need to know is that they worked 1,331 chargeable hours. And you need to know that there's 2,080 hours in a year. So there are 40 hours in a week. There are 52 weeks in a year. You end up with 2,080 hours. And that's an important number to keep in mind for a lot of financial calculations, and especially for utilization rate, if you're given a problem where you're only given the hours. So 1,300 31 hours worked on actual projects divided by a possible total of 2080 is 63.9%. So utilization rate would be 64%. Now, of course, no one is ever going to work 2080 hours in a week, right? There's holidays, there's vacation, uh, there's different other kinds of time off. Um, but for your financial calculations, that's the number you've got to keep in mind, 2080 hours in a work year. Okay, here's one more example. This is from the NCARB handbook. This is sample item four from the PCM section. And you are basically trying to figure out the utilization rate of this employee and you're given their tasks, just very similar to what I did on my assignment. Uh, so the trick here is understanding what things are actually projects and what is not. So you've got Westside Community Center, you're working as a project manager. Yes, that counts. You've got this other project, you're working as a project manager. Yes, that counts. You've got Parkside Apartments, you're drawing, reviewing, redlining. Yes, that counts. That's actual production work. And then here's the trick on this question. Northview Gymnasium responding to an RFP. You've got to keep in mind the difference between RFP and RFI, right? RFP is request for proposal. The Architect's Handbook of Professional Practice counts this as marketing time, right? So even though this is a project with a project name and a project number, that's not a project that your firm actually has this is a project your firm is trying to get. That's what's signified here by RFP. So those four and a half hours do not count as direct labor. You're not working on a project. You're working on trying to get a project in this case. That's why that's a trick question. And then these last two are obvious. Office operations, that's not billable. And then continuing education, that doesn't count. So when you look at the answer on the next sheet, um, that's why they didn't include that one. All right, let's do one more example um, that's a little bit different. All the examples so far, we've talked about utilization rate and we've been given hours. They were either directly given to you or you had to add them up and count some and not count the others, but they were all basically one variation of finding the hours and dividing it by 2080 or dividing it by you know the weeks. So this is from assignment 41, um, but it's applicable here. So what if you have to find utilization rate and you're not given um, direct labor or indirect labor? You can also find this based on salary expenses. So in this situation, um, you know that you are expected to bill $123,189 and your billing rate is $85. So that's your utilization rate right there, just about. You've got $183,189 divided by 85. That means that you will have 1,449 hours charged to that project. 1,449 divided by 2080, you're at 70%. And those numbers are crazy high, but it's just something to keep in mind. You know, a lot of times on the exam, you are going to be given a question and you're not going to be given the information to solve it the most easy, simple way that you know how. So always try to keep in mind what information you're given and what it actually represents, right? So if you're given um, a salary or you're given a total billable amount and you're given a billable rate, you can use that to figure out the number of hours worked. And once you have the number of hours worked, you can figure out what your utilization rate is. So thanks for watching. If I talk too fast, you can put this on 0.75 speed and uh, definitely leave a comment if you got any questions or requests. Thank you.